Yeah, good morning. It's Jim from jagfx.com. It is Saturday, the 8th of May, 2021. This is just my weekly analysis video where I go over all of the daily charts and all the pairs that I'm trading using the high probability and divergence methods from my two of my books. Now, I know I said I was going to do these videos on Monday or Tuesday from now on, but we're in partial lockdown because of COVID, so normally I'll be going out watching sport and drinking beers, etc. but I can't do that, so guess what? Video's getting done on a Saturday again. So all good. At least we can have a look what's coming up on Monday and where we stand, etc. All right, uh, first up, hope everyone's enjoying the weekend, staying safe wherever you are. Thanks for watching these videos. If you do like them, I know they're not the most exciting videos, but if you do like them, just if you could hit the like button or the subscribe button, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, a lot of my trading, um, all these trades I'm going to show you, and I'll, hang on, I'll bring up the Word document first. Uh, now we'll go to the news first. So, All right, so a lot of my trading, or all of my trading on the daily charts is all called live in the Facebook group and the Telegram channels. So everyone's more than welcome to join that. Uh, the results of those trades are recorded on the shared spreadsheet which is available to everyone. Also, it's through Google Drive. There's a link to that in the description of the video. And any trade management, etc. I call on the channels also. I take a screenshot of every trade I take, and that's put in the shared folder also. So it's very transparent. I call the trades at the time, not after the fact, so you can get an idea. Show different ways of managing the trades, as you'll see shortly. So... It's a lot happening. So let's have a look at the news. Now, this is the Forex factory economic calendar. It's free. It's set up. You can set it up to filter for what you want, um, the, what currencies you want to look at, what impact. So the red's the high impact, orange ones are the medium impact. I like to look at the red ones mainly, but I'll keep the orange ones on the screen just to get an idea. Uh, it's set up my, my local time, which is um, I live in Vietnam, so that's in Vietnamese local time. So we'll just go and have a look at how much these experts stuff up. This is Friday or last night. So we had Canadian and USD employment numbers or unemployment numbers, which way depends which way you read it. Um, now, this number here is the forecast and this number here is the actual. Now, look at this. These so-called experts, the unemployment rate, the forecast was 7.8%, come out at 8.1%. That's in Canada. That's shocking. Um, look at the US one. Forecast, 58 coming out at 6.1%. Look at the numbers on uh, the non-farm employment change. Expected 990,000, come out at 206. These experts are, mate, they're just guessing. I'm sure they are. But anyway, let's move on. Let's have a look at next weekend's. Hence the big moves on the USD last night. All right, let's have a look at, this is the week ahead of news, so we'll always have a look at this. Um, there's been a few inquiries on the JagFX sites during the week about why there were spikes and why people are getting into trades. If you're a day trader on the 15-minute chart, even the one-hour charts, you've got to be aware of this stuff. So this is the week ahead, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Not much happening at all. Got a talking head. Bank of England government Bailey speaks on, on uh, Tuesday. It's the first of the high impact. He speaks again on Wednesday, busy person. CPI numbers out of the US on Wednesday. Mm, Thursday, we have um, Bank of Canada government Macklem speaks. So that's another talking head. Retail sales out of the US on Friday. The only other thing is probably of note on Tuesday, Australian budget release, which is a big thing in Australia. So really not much in the news, just retail sales, CPI. Yeah, very quiet week in the news ahead. So let's have a look at the charts. Now, before we go to the charts, I'll just bring up this Word document somewhere if I can find it. Now, you'll see, if you've never seen any of my videos before, there's a lot happening on some of my charts. There's a lot of lines. It's very intimidating, confusing. The true naked um, Forex traders or chart traders will look at it and go, mate, it's just too much spaghetti or whatever on the charts. But there is a method to my madness. Um, and you'll see here, if you read this document here, 
You can either pause the video, take a screenshot, or just pause the video and read it. It explains what all the indicators are, what all the different colours, lines, etc. are, just to make things a bit easier for you. I normally go through it on the chart as I go through each pair. So, but this, if you want to have a look at it and just um, not sure about things, this explains it. Um, so we've got the indicators and the MACD Platinum, all the different colours, etc. Here's the main indicator, the QMP filter, which is the green and red dots on the chart. So you can read that. I'll bring it up at the end. So let's have a look at the charts. Now, as I said, it's a busy chart. Now, going back a long time ago, I was basically, if I got in the trade, like S1, sequence one starts all the way back here and I'm still in the sequence. What happened was I was hedging, using the hedging technique on everything at the time. I don't do that these days. Hedging nowadays is done mainly on hidden divergence or a very uh, a good setup that I think is um, be, be good for it, like an extreme. Like when I say extreme, oh, the MACD platinum is a long way from the zero level or price is a long way from the MAs. But generally now the hedging is only done on the initial trade is a based on hidden divergence. So we'll start with it. This is my watch list on the right. Anything that's highlighted in blue means I've got trades on. Highlighted in pink means I'm looking at something. No highlight, no trades. So this is all the pairs I'm trading in alphabetical order on the daily time frame. This is all in the daily charts. So let's have a look. We'll start with the Aussie Swiss. You'll see my notes on the charts. I've got plenty of notes. Like I said, pause the video. Uh, I'm, I've maybe talked too quick. You don't understand the Australian accent. English is not your first language. Just pause the video. Read my notes on the chart. There's plenty of them. And I generally try to put as much information as I can without cluttering up the chart too much. Now, up the, you'll see up the top, you'll see the pair I'm trading, profit to date. Now, that's just for the that actual pair I'm trading. And that's from when I've started trading this pair from day one. And generally, all my trades are based on a 0.02 lot base lot, so which is 20 cents a pip. I just try to keep it consistent. Uh, you will see bigger trades, like look here, there's 0.26. That's with hedging and stuff. But if I'm just taking a buy or a sell with a stop in place, 0.02 lot. Uh, sometimes you'll see overall B slash E, which is break even, not applicable, negative, and that, that just gives you a heads up where I am at overall with all my trades. So we've got this sequence one. Don't worry about that too much if you're not into the hedging. It's a lot happening uh, at the moment. That sequence is hedged. Sequence two starts here. Um, now, this was a sell. It was taken at this level here. My sell trades are the red vertical lines, red horizontal line. So it's a sell taking here. It's gone against me, come down, gone up, come back down to my entry level, gone back up, starting to come back down to my entry level again. I uh, just left it on there. Sequence three was a buy. It's just this one here. Um, you can read my notes there, hidden bullish divergence. So no, you can see the green lines. If you read that document, green lines represent the bullish divergence. Um, so you can see it there, the hidden divergence, lower lows on the MACD platinum, which is an oscillator, and higher lows on price, which is up here. So you can see that. So we had a, a buy, hedge sell, second buy, second hedge sell, now we're looking for another buy. The grey vertical line is a warning signal. There's a green dot on the MACD Platinum below the zero level. That's the zero level there. So remember with the MACD Platinum, I'm generally looking to buy when it's below the zero level and sell when it's above the zero level. The MACD Platinum will oscillate around the zero level. It will always go back to the zero level eventually, as you can see previously. So that's the theory behind it. At the moment, this is going sideways for the last week, going nowhere fast. This red dotted line is the stop loss for this sequence two sell. There's no stops in place for sequence three. Read my notes. We're going all right. It's a pair that's a generally slow moving, had some nice move. I don't really like trading this pair, but it hasn't done me too much damage, so I'm happy to trade it out. Aussie, Japanese yen, it's highlighted in pink, means I'm looking at something on Monday. Now, this was I'm on one sequence of trades here. So you can see here the MACD platinum's below the zero level. The initial trade was this sequence. Uh, first trade was a buy, 
nil stop hidden bullish divergence. So you can see lower lows on MACD Platinum, higher lows on price. So I took the buy, went against me, hedged it, took a second buy, uh, went against me again, hedged it again, took a third buy. Now this blue line, I just draw these blue trend lines in, uh, want to see it crack this previous high. Now on Friday, we've popped through the overall break even, which is this yellow line there. So if I just go down to say a 30 minute chart, I'll just show you where it is. So we're well above this yellow line, which is the overall break even. I'll go back to the daily chart. So what I could do is I could close all these trades now for overall profit or on Monday, depending on where it opens on Monday, the good thing I like here is the MACD Platinum, even though it's above the zero level, the last signal was a, a green dot. So that's why I just left it. I want to see where it opens on Monday and what I might consider doing is closing, say, the first few trades and this last trade closing a partial close and putting a tight stop in place maybe below these lows here. So it's a slow moving pair. I'm not making much profit of it. Um, but yeah, now we're, we're through the zero level, so it's time to take some action, keep a close eye on it. It's broken this high. If it pushes up high, that'd be great on Monday. So that's why I'm, I'm just looking at it. Aussie, New Zealand, uh, um, last trade was a buy, popped up nicely, bounced off this, which was uh, resistance, become support, become resistance again, hit it again, popped down. Now it's starting up near my entry level. MACD Platinum still below the zero level. It's based on hidden bullish divergence, no stop in place. So until the MACD Platinum goes through the zero level, then I might consider putting a stop in place. So that's Aussie New Zealand. Aussie USD, similar to the Aussie Swiss in an old sequence way back to the left of the chart. Uh, overall break even for all the trades at the moment is this yellow dotted line, dashed line, sorry. But in the meantime, on Monday, we've got a buy signal. So there's a buy signal there. So normally if there's something happening on Monday, I'll write my notes on the video, say so Monday buy. So here's what I'm doing. Sequence one, I'll be taking a six hedge buy. The reason I'm, my last trade was a sell here. It's above that, so I'll be taking a loss. Uh, and the MACD platinum's above the zero level, so I'm looking to sell. So I'll take the hedge buy on Monday, so that'll be add to this sequence here, which will, at the moment, it's minus 0 0.26. So that'll hedge that sequence. Because generally, I'm looking for a sell based on what the MACD Platinum's telling me. Now, sequence two is a sell trade. It was based on a, uh, a nice resistance level, this blue line up here. Um, and I've extended that across and also hidden bearish divergence here. So you can see it's not a very obvious one, but lower highs on price. Just making sure, yep, lower highs on price and higher highs on the MACD Platinum. So you can see there, definitely red line. It's a bit hard to see because the blue line's there, but definitely up there. So no stop in place. So I'll take a hedge buy on sequence two. Still looking for a sell. You'll see the green dash lines if you didn't read the Word document. They're just big numbers. Aussie tends to support these numbers well. This is 70 cent level, 75 cent level, 80 cent level. So we're pushing up. Will it break clear this high? Who knows? But there's definitely a buy signal on Monday. I'm taking action, hence the highlight um, purple, pink. CAD Swiss. Okay, a couple of things happening here. Monday, there's a new sell signal. You can see the red dot on the QMP filter there. Uh, it's a high risk trade because we're going into the MAs. But because we didn't break this previous high here, it suggests that the trend may be changing. Uh, just basic market structure stuff. Uh, but I'm in a buy trade here. Sequence one's a buy trade. At the moment, you can read the notes there. Uh, I've already closed half on that buy trade and my stop was set at this level here. On Monday, I'm going to take a sell uh, on a new sequence two sell trade. There is hidden bearish divergence, so I won't have a stop in place. And I'm moving my stop on sequence one up to this level here. Uh, I just generally with the daily charts, I just drop down to the four hour and just have a look somewhere where I can put a stop. So I just move it up there. That's a four hour chart. Go back to the daily, 
it just puts it, it locks in a little bit of profit and gives me some protection on the sell trade. I'm just bringing the stop from here to there on Monday and taking a new sell trade there. Sequence two, it's a CAD Swiss. CAD Yen, I'm in a buy trade here, already closed half, stop and place, nothing happening at the moment. The MACD Platinum's through the zero level. Now, in the meantime, all I do is I adjust these trend lines every day. Uh, there's nothing confirmed yet. There's and if I keep on adjusting this, adjusting this, and adjusting this, and it becomes no longer valid, I just delete it. But in the meantime, it's just a bit of preparation. That's all it is. So we're in a good buy there, going up nicely. It's not a pair that gives me much profit, but it's, it's had a couple of big moves, so I'm just stay with it. Euro Aussie, this pair has been going sideways. No, we're fast, right? And similar to the Aussie USD. Actually, the Aussie USD and the Euro AUD sort of move in opposite directions. They're inversely correlated. So they tend to do the same thing, just in opposite directions. So we've got an old sequence one way back here, which is currently hedged. We've got a sequence two, uh, which was, and you can see the MACD Platinum's just been above zero level for a long time. Generally it moves nicely, but here we've got this crappy sort of move and it's all this sideways action. This thing's been sideways for a long time. So the initials was based on hidden bearish divergence, hence no stop. Uh, we've taken a, a hedge buy, a second sell, a second hedge buy, now we're waiting for a sell. I thought we would have got it on Monday. We didn't. So just a matter of waiting, trying um, to see how we go. Yeah, it's a big sort of, I could probably extend this a bit. It's a bit sideways. This level here is relevant. Uh, yeah, it's not not pretty. It's the Euro Aussie made some good profit on it, so not too bad. Euro CAD uh, in a sell trade up here, again drawing my trend lines in, getting ready for potential reversal. Uh, the trend is down. You can look at the MAs. Remember the MAs? That's a two forty LMA. That's a hundred EMA, fifty EMA. Heading down, MACD platinum through the zero level. All good there. We had a bullish candle on uh, Friday, but this thing, the MACD platinum is still not turning up as yet. So we'll just see how we go on that. We've already closed half, locking in nice profit, Euro CAD. Euro Pound, this is probably one I messed up. Um, all right, there's, now we've got this big, the initial sell trade, we've got one sequence here. The initial sell trade was here, based on hidden bearish divergence. Uh, then it went against me, went against me, went against me. I drew this trend line across here, broke the trend line, took a second sell based on the trend line break. You can read the notes there. My overall break here was this yellow line, went through nicely, went down there. Then we had UK interest rate news. I should have probably taken some action and reduced my risk. I didn't. Uh, the reason why, the MACD platinum is still above the zero level, so I was hoping it, it would push down further after the news, but the news sent it the other way. So now we're above the break-even level. Still got this sort of resistance level up here with price. Uh, it sort of stalled a bit on Friday, which is good. The MACD Platinum still heading down. So I'm st still confident, but if I had to, I might have, may have to take a hedge buy if a buy presents with the MACD Platinum above the zero level. Yeah, in hindsight, I probably should have done something. I closed and tighten it up before the news. My mistake, my bad. Euro yen, highlight in pink means something's happening. Let's have a look, Monday, all I'm doing, I'm in two trades. I've got an S1, which is sequence one, which is this buy trade. Uh, it's got a pretty tight stop. All I'm doing is moving the stop up below, just a little few pips up below the lows here. So if I go down the four hour chart, it's probably a bit more obvious. So my stop is here at the moment. All I'm doing is moving up to below the lows, so just locking in a few pips there, nothing much. So where is it at the moment? It's at um, 75.6, moving up to 95.6, moving in 20 pips. In the meantime, I'm in this sell trade here uh, with a stop in place there. You can read the notes there, regular bearish divergence. Overall break in is this 131978, which is this yellow dash line. As long as price remains below that, um, I can't lose on both trades. 
but as you can see, it's right out at the moment. Um, so we'll see how it goes. It's, so all I'm doing on Monday is moving the stop up on sequence one, up 20 pips. Euro New Zealand. Yeah, Euro New Zealand. Uh, this thing's been going sideways for a, a couple of weeks, three weeks now. Uh, stuck in a bit of a range. Hence the blue trend lines there. No trades on at the moment. Some nice profit there. Not, I don't mind trading this pair. Grey vertical line at the moment just means it's a warning signal. There's a green dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level. There was a buy signal here. You can just see the green dot here. I didn't take it. It was a, just not a good setup. Uh, I could consider taking a buy here. I like this sort of support level, you know, but it's just not. It's not clean. We're in the we're in amongst the moving averages. It's range bound. I'm just going to wait for a nice clean signal. But if you you know if you took a buy there, just keep it tight. Put a stop below the low there. Uh, it's not such a. I just want to see what that counter looks like. Yeah, Friday was a bit messy with that those numbers coming way out on the Canadian and US employment numbers. Euro USD, you can see the big move be created from NFP. Uh, the US dollar is basically tanked, so the euro goes up. Um, so I well, had a sell here. Sequence one, initially taken on hidden bearish divergence. So there's my sell. I was concerned about this green level, which is a 1.200, which is a big round number. It didn't break through it. It's bounced off the MAs. Everything's very tight. Then the NFP numbers come out and bang, up she goes. So it was based on hidden divergence. Now I've drawn these new red trend lines, possibly, possibly setting up for regular divergence. Uh, if I get a buy signal, I'll take the hedge buy. But that's the Euro USD going against me. Thank you, news. Uh, pound Aussie, similar sort of. Uh, now the pound pairs, you'll see a few of the pound pairs, all the same, sort of messy. They do cause me some grief, but they do give me a lot of profit, the pound pairs. Uh, and as always, as I mentioned a lot of times in my, in my Facebook posts and Telegram channel posts, be aware of correlation. Like I'd basically take every trade just to get as many trade examples as possible. What have I taken? Over 1,400 trades on the daily charts that have called the groups. So just if you're a trader and you know, you're know you limited with regards to your, um, your leverage or your account size, just pick one. Because generally with the pound pairs, if one goes bad, they all go bad. Except in this case, which I'll show you shortly. But the pound Aussie, um, I took a buy in here based on um, hidden bullish divergence, which is a common theme. Everything was very tight. The MAs are all very tight. Drew this trend line across here. Uh, it broke the trend line, but it was close to my entry, so I didn't take the trade. So I'll probably delete that trend line just to clear. I get to declutter the chart a bit. Now, then it dropped down again, probably on the UK uh, interest rate news. And we still didn't buy. There's been no sell signal. There's a grey line there saying it's a warning signal. There's a red dot on the MACD platform, but it's low, below the zero level. Still in buy mode. So I've just adjusted the, the trend line again across these highs. So looking for a potential break of that, but I don't think it'll happen. What will more than likely happen now is we'll get a sell signal uh, on Tuesday or something, like, unless there's something drastic happens, and I'll take the hedge sell. So that's the pound Aussie. Pound Swiss, a little bit different. Uh, I did take a second trade here. I, was, I got a bit... Uh, so the initial buy trade was based on uh, hidden bullish divergence. Like I said, very similar to the pound pairs that they move. Uh, it went against me, went against me, went against me. I oh, know this one's a little bit different. Uh, I got, a, I did get the sell trade there, so I took a hedge sell, which is, I'm happy to do. MACD platinum still below the zero level. Then, just about two days later, I got a new buy signal, so I took the second buy, and it put my overall break even up here. And that's gone against me already. Again, trend lines have been drawn. I'll get rid of that one. So we're still in buy mode here. Very similar to the pound Aussie, except I've got three trades on. Again, red dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level. And again, drawing trend lines, uh, the green potential divergence lines in as price continues down. 
Um, if we get a break of this trend line and this, if we don't get a new sell signal, then it will look to push up again. Yeah, it's all a bit messy. Pound in. Uh, I wasn't a buy. I closed out of that buy in here somewhere. It was just going nowhere fast. We've got a red dot on the MACD platform right on the zero level. Uh, and as I think I said, I mentioned my post, the head and shoulders people have been getting excited. You know, we're not breaking the highs. We, we had this high here, came down, didn't come to the MAs, which I prefer if it did. Pushed up, you know, it broke the high, but it's not convincing. It's come back down, sort of the same. Didn't break the high, came back down, pushed up again, and now meandering. It's having trouble breaking this high here. So not sure what's happening, but we're in no trades. Made some good profit. Pound New Zealand, this is a very messy chart. Uh, this is one I did take a bit of a risk on. I'm in two very old sequences, so one, two, and they're positive at the moment, which is not good because they were taking on this S3 candle. So I took three trades, one for sequence one, one for sequence two, and one for sequence three in here. Now, the sequence, if, if you're not doing the hedging, don't worry about all this on the left. There's a couple of good notes here, a couple of good things. One, I've made plenty of profit on this pair, $10,300. So I'm just chipping away, adding to my profit. Even though I've got lots of trades on, it's messy, I get that. Overall break evens off the chart somewhere up here, it's 2.08507. Don't worry about that. It's not really relevant. I'm only long plus 0 0.60, so it's, it's a decent size um, overall. Let's have a look at sequence three. Sequence three was taking on a buy. You can read my notes, hidden bullish diversion. So that that sequence three starts here, taken there. Uh, it didn't really go at all. <laughs> Went against me right from the get-go. Uh, remained in buy mode. There's no sell signal. So what I did is I, uh, trend line break. So what I did, I had a, I'll just move, use this trend line here. Uh, had a trend line down here, had that initial trend line, popped up, so I took a second sell, only on sequence three, I didn't want to risk it on the other two sequences, so I took a second sell, a uh, buy signal, uh, and I had this nice support level too, so, so and it gave me a break in, this yellow dotted line there, uh, and it, straight away it's come straight back down. Right, the day after, and I knew there was UK interest rate news. It's just a risky take, and it's come down, and now we're in a little bit of pain. So I've readjusted my um, trend line. At the moment, we're still in buy mode. So that's why that trend line's in place there. Um, we're going to get a sell, no doubt. So what I'll do, if I get a sell, I'll hedge these two sequences, sequence one, sequence two, and sequence three I'll also hedge. Because I'm plus 0 0.08, I'll go with a sell 0 0.08 to hedge that. Um, that's a risk you take when you take a second trade and you're adding to your position, not hedging. Yeah, that's a risk I'm prepared to take. I've got good profit there. It's a pair I don't mind trading. That's the Power New Zealand. So at the moment, nothing happening on Monday, but that's where we're at. Pound USD. Now, remember all the other pound pairs went down? This one's gone up uh, because of the, the USD factor, the, the news from the US on, on uh, Friday. Now, sequence one, sequence two. Don't worry about those notes there. Or good profit. Let's look at the profit first. $9,300 on this pair. Uh, it's a pair up on trading. The initial... Trade on sequence one was based on hidden divergence. Again, I've lost my trend lines. What's going on with trading view? Draw all these trading view I like, but sometimes I just keep on losing my way. trend lines. But anyway, so the initial trade sequence one was based on hidden divergence. I may have stuffed up in here, I may have missed the chance to get out. Uh, and now I'm stuck in this sequence. So we've ground up where I want to actually, I'm in a sell sort of mode. Um, so now sequence two, if you, so se sequence one, I've just got to try and work my way out of it. Uh, I'm adding to the profits, which is good. 
And at the moment, I'm short, which is not so good, minus 0 0.26. Uh, the last trade was this sell here. And that was also sequence two. Now, sequence two, you can read my notes here. There is hidden bearish divergence. Look, it's not convincing. Again, I've lost all my um, trend lines. Oh, it seems to be on this pair too. I don't know why. So there's a, there's a divergence. It's a little bit tricky to spot because it, it's not really a high here, but it's rel it's equivalent to this high. You can see it's a bit of a it, it's a it's a resistance level, but this red line I'm trying to draw it across the top here. Um, it's flat, and this is up. I know it's a little bit tricky to spot there, but it's definitely hidden. I've got a stop in place. I probably don't really need the stop. I can try and work my way out of it, but I've just put the stop in place for sequence two, and it's probably going to clang her up through that stop and take a loss on sequence two. In the meantime, I've got to work my way out of sequence one. It's all very sideways, the pound USD. Hasn't been kind to me lately, but I don't mind trading it. New Zealand CAD, let's have a look at that. This video seems to be going on forever. All right, highlight in pink. Only reason it's highlighted Monday, all I'm doing is move my stop down from here down to here. Uh, it, it's a nice trade. I'm in a sell. It's come down nicely. It kept on going. Had a, had a, um, a bullish candle followed by a big bearish candle followed by another bullish candle. So all I'm doing is bring my stop down. If I go down the four-hour chart, you can see it's a um, just across the so it's moving from there to there. Just trying to lock in some profit. Go back to daily. So that's all I'm doing on Monday. Monday stop down to uh, New Zealand Japanese yen uh, high risk sell trade here. Uh, Hasn't gone anywhere in my favour at all. Uh, I was relying on this sort of resistance level, or triple top. As you can see by my notes, MACD Platinum's bubble is zero level, stop in place. It's gone against me, getting close to my stop, sort of pull back a bit on Friday, just see how it pans out. Nothing happening at the moment. New Zealand USD, um, again, the Kiwi's gone against me. Similar to the Aussie, the Aussie and the Aussie USD and the New Zealand USD tend to move the same way. They're very similar in chart patterns, hence they're very similar with my trade. So there's a correlation there. A little bit different, on, I've got another sequence here on the um, New Zealand sequence two, which was based on hidden bearish divergence. I can't seem to get out of it. Um, um, in the meantime, making some good profit, nearly $3,000 there. So we'll just look at sequence three. That's the one we probably should concentrate on. If you're not into the hedging, there's a lot of break-even levels. If you see yellow dash lines, that's a break-even level normally for a sequence or an overall. But because there's two, I normally put the overall break-even up a solid yellow line. But let's have a look at sequence three. Here's the notes here. Sell, nil stop, nice resistance level. So it's this um, level here. I've extended it now. Hidden bearish divergence. So it's the same, similar to the previous one, a little bit harder spot, but there's a high there going up. Hence, there's no stop in place. Now, we've potentially got regular bearish divergence, nothing confirmed yet. So I will look at, there's nothing doing at the moment. I've just got to leave everything as is. Um, if it breaks this high up here, then I've got to consider pivoting to the upside. Not sure where it's going. I should probably draw a grey, a green line at the 75 because that, that's, see this come up to close to 75. So we'll, we'll go to a level here, a uh, big level. And we'll put that at 75 because that's a big number. You can see price, price come up close to it. And this one here you'll probably find a 70 cent level. So like the Aussie, it bounces around those numbers. Nothing doing at the moment. I'll go to USD Japanese Yen before I go to the Swiss franc. Um, in a buy here based on um, hidden divergence. So it's gone up, gone up nicely. Again, we're getting this head and shoulders sort of pattern potential. Got a sell signal here. Now, if you're in a traditional buy with a stop in place below this low, if you, oh, on Monday, I would close that trade. I would just say there's a sell signal. That would be enough. Don't let it hit your stop. 
this this to me looks like we've had a high come back down not really much new high came down lower low now we've got a high hasn't broken that one to me that just is a and it's a head and shoulder market structure more than likely highly likely changing to the downside so what i will do on monday i'm going to take a hedge sell on my buy i'm not going to close it because i'm based the original trade on hidden bullish divergence which i do do the hedging sequence but if i was a traditional trader i would just close that trade take the loss but i'm going to sell hedge sell usd swiss franc this is one pair it does give me grief but let's just start off with i've got three sequences and they are all positive at the moment which is not good there is a new sell signal it's a little bit hard to see it's under here somewhere there is a sell signal on monday monday so sequence one sequence two sequence three i'm going to take extra hedge cells on those three sequences so i want to hedge those three sequences sequence four this is the one that's relevant uh, if you're in a traditional trader, you probably would have been stopped up because you stopped, stopped out, your stop would have been below here. You know, bang, and it's come down a long way. We're on this big number here. It's a 90 cent level on Monday. NFP, USD, Euro USD moves up. USD, Swiss franc moves down. They're inversely correlated. Strong correlation at times between them. New sell signal on Monday. Hedging sequence four. Sequence four was a a buy trade based on hidden bullish divergence. So there was a hidden bullish divergence initially, then regular bullish divergence. So I like it, MACD platinum's below the zero level. I'm quite happy to hedge that. The good thing about the USD Swiss franc, even though it's caused me grief, I don't dislike the pair immensely, it's given me good profit, $13,200 roughly in profit. So it's a pair I've just got to be patient with, try and work my way out. This video seems to be going forever. All right, I'll just bring up the notes so we understand what we're looking at. So if you missed all those things, what I'm looking at, that's the, that's the um, you can pause the video, read it again, all the different coloured lines, etc. cetera, me. Guys, enjoy your weekend. It's a long video. Thanks for watching. If you do like the video, please hit the like button or subscribe button, and I will chat to you later. Cheers.